Greetings. I'm Mr. French. I'm coming to you from my classroom in Mount Pleasant, Utah. And this is a follow on video for topic 4.4 Introduction to Related Rates, where we will go over some examples. So here's our first example. We're going to let x and y be functions of time t such that the difference of twice x and three times y is a constant. So let's break that down. First of all, x and y are our variables, but they're really functions of time. So we can think of them as x of t and y of t, but we generally just use x and y with that implied knowledge that time is what causes x and y to change. So our relationship between x and y is the difference of twice x and three times y is a constant. So here's where we set up the constraining relationship or the static relationship between x and y. So 2x minus 3y twice x and three times y, the difference, is equal to a constant. So we'll just call that k. Now we want to find an equation to describe the relationship between the rates of change of x and y. So here we have our static relationship, 2x minus 3y is a constant. And now we're going to examine how their rates of change are related. So we take the derivative with respect to time. So the derivative of x with respect to time is going to be dx dt. We have that 2 out in front. And then our derivative of y with respect to time is going to be dy dt. And the derivative of a constant, of course, is 0. So the relationship here, generally we like to express it as one derivative is equal to some function of the other derivative. So if we're going to solve for dy dt, I could say 2 dx dt. My twos never seem to start out strong. It's going to equal 3 dy dt. And then dividing by 3, I would get 2 thirds dx dt is equal to dy dt. And this would be the way I would express that relationship between their rates of change. Let's look at another example. All right, Newton's law of gravitation states that the force of attraction F between two bodies of constant mass, M1 and M2, and the distance R between the two bodies satisfy the relationship below, where G is the universal gravitational constant. So force equals G times the product of the two masses that we're working with, divided by the distance between the two masses squared. Now, in this expression, we want to identify which of these expressions or letters is going to be a variable in the relationship and which are constants. So the masses are constant according to our description and G is a universal gravitational constant. So my two variables, F and R, are both functions of time, right? So this could really be F of T equals G M1 M2 over R of T, because R is also going to be changing in this relationship. As R changes, F changes for these other constants. If we want to find an equation that expresses the relationship between the rates of change of f and r, then we need to take the derivative. So to take the derivative, I'm actually going to rewrite the expression. I'm going to get rid of the t's because they just are implied. But I'm going to rewrite this so it's easier to take the derivative by bringing up the r squared from the denominator and making it r to the negative 2. Now when I take the derivative with respect to time, on the left, I'm going to get df dt. 
and on the right, we're going to get bring down by the power rule the negative two, and then the gmm are just coefficients to my r, which gets raised to the negative three, and then by the chain rule, I also have dr dt. Remember, any variable, when we look at the rates of change, is going to have a rate of change with respect to time. So here's our relationship between the rates of change. We could also move the r to the negative three back down to the denominator and express the relationship in this way. Let's look at a third example here. Here we have a right triangle with base h inches and height x inches. So let's draw that. A right triangle with base h inches and height x inches, where h is constant and x changes with respect to time. So x is my variable. So I could think of that as x of t if I wanted to. And then the angle measured in radians is defined by the equation below. So the tangent of theta is x over h. Since tangent is opposite over adjacent, that would make this angle my theta. And that's going to be changing. So it's actually an expression of time as well. Now I want to describe the relationship that comes from this fixed static relationship. I need to describe the changing relationship, the rates of change, which means I take the derivative using the chain rule. So the derivative of tangent theta, the derivative of tangent is going to be secant squared theta. But then by the chain rule, I also have the derivative of the inside, so d theta dt. Now, x over h could also be looked at as 1 over h times x, where 1 over h is my coefficient since h is a constant. And when I take the derivative, I'm going to get 1 over h dx dt, derivative of x with respect to time. Remember, every variable has a derivative with respect to time in our rate of change expression. So if I'm going to solve for d theta dt, that would mean that I need, need to move the secant squared theta over to the right-hand side, so d theta dt is going to be 1 over the secant squared of theta times 1 over h d theta dx dt. But 1 over the secant is the cosine. So let's take that and rewrite that. Now I've got d theta dt equals cosine squared theta times 1 over h dx dt. And then if I want to express the rate of change of theta with respect to x instead of with a theta in there, I can go back to my right triangle and say, well, if h and x are my sides, then the hypotenuse much must be the square root of h squared plus x squared. And the cosine of theta would be the adjacent h over the hypotenuse. So this would be h over the hypotenuse, square root of h squared plus x squared. And then since it's cosine squared, I would square all of this times 1 over h dx dt. And then we can look and see if we can simplify this any further. Well, if I square the top, I get h squared. And if I square the bottom, I get rid of the square root. So h squared plus x squared times 1 over h dx dt. And then we can see that one of my h's will divide out. And I end up with h over 
h squared plus x squared dx dt would be my relationship between d theta dt and dx dt. Eventually, we'll be given some values so that we can solve for a numerical value for d theta dt, and we'll have enough information. They'll give us an h, an x, and a dx dt to solve for that. But that's getting into our second lesson about related rates, which we will see in the next video.